佛的智慧啊，他对于宇宙的人生、过去、未来这一切万法当中，佛都能够明了。Past, present, future. One who can be called Buddha is one who has perfect clarity, perfect understanding on everything that happens in the past, present, and future,、um, and they understand it accurately and well-rounded. And there's there's no leak in the knowledge. It's correct. It's not twisted. It's not biased, so it's hence we call it perfect clarity. And the phenomena of the infinitudes of universe,、uh, how did it come into being?、Uh, from where it came from to where it goes to.、Uh, so, as I see in the in the in the slide.、Um, How did the universe come into being? What's the origin or lack thereof? The process that took place. So, how did, does the universe form, and what's the fate of each of this universe?、Oh. So, how did they came into being, and what's the result? What's the ending for it? None of them. He does not know. He knows everything about this. Um, three thousand years ago, Buddha has already predicted. Um, you know, talk about the universe and how how many layers of it and how many、uh, multitudes of it. Before, long before the science, scientific in you know advancement in cosmological studies.、Uh, so back then he already have that system where you know Milky Way,、um, solar system in the in the Milky Way, and then it goes to the infinite, right? Six in scale. So the the fact that he can say that three thousand years ago. Uh, without any of these tools, telescopes, Buddha has already mentioned everything and very detail of uh, uh, living beings in there. So, if we bring it down to our Earth, he also know how the Earth is going. You know what's the process the Earth has to go through, how the Earth you will go through. You know formation, existence, which is now deterioration and void, Chen Zhu Huai Kong. So. Only people with supreme wisdom able to do that.、Uh, normal people can't just do it out of the blue, right? Just like when us,、uh, some of us read the Infinite Sutra, two thousand five hundred years ago or three thousand years ago.、Uh, So Buddha already said in the sutra, in this era, foods are no longer safe, full of chemicals, basically.、Uh, and they call it the food are filled with poisons that are harmful to your health.、Uh, and all the、uh, soil are infertile, so it's hard to get healthy food.、Uh, and then they talk about obviously this extends to polluted air, polluted land, polluted. Sound,、um, and it, all this has been mentioned in the sutra that was recorded three thousand years ago. So, from these hard evidence, when we can see that、um, without supreme wisdom, without a person, a person without a full wisdom, full picture of the whole thing, they can't even able to fathom this kind of、uh, thing, let alone say it out in a. Very consistent and structured matter. So the point of saying this is to complete our life, right? The first thing is, but it goes beyond that. It goes beyond just having a happy life. It's also a, a full understanding of the whole cause and effect, the whole cycles, the whole、um, um, particles or, or elements that cause this to happen, and what's the result of it. So this is the greatness of Buddha. This is where the Buddha greatness lies in.、Mm. 
he does not have any um uh, biased error delusions only person who own who has attained this level of understanding knowing is called a buddha so there are many wisdom but if you put the wisdom to the highest standard to the the most um strictest standards then it's called buddha so no bias no error no delusions so this is a, something like what other religion call the um their deities or deity the gods as all-knowing omni present but this is actually inherent in ours and all of us it's not just one deity everyone has the ability uh, all of us has the ability uh, but uh, we, that means we can and has the right and potential to know to be that level of all-knowing, omnipresent. Uh, just a, this is just a brief overview on Buddha and his wisdom. On his wisdom. Mm. We will go in depth in why can't we reach that level now. Before we go on, I would like to uh, explain one thing, uh, cl clarify one thing. Because right now we talk about universe, uh, the truth of the universe. Um, we talk about the truth. Uh, before I come here, I was in university. So back in the days when I was giving talk in university, I always have uh, a lot of um, uh, students from different religions or traditions ask me. Uh, our religion, uh, our God, our Allah, always told us um, the creations you know, the, of the world. It means, you know, the living beings, the, the beings of the world. Uh, as long as it has living thing, uh, it has life. Um, doesn't matter it's uh, sentient or non-sentient. You know? They're all created by this one God. So they ask me, what do the Buddha create? What can the Buddha create? So um, if one day you have uh, friends or... Um, uh, colleagues or friends of people asking you this kind of question uh, what what can Buddhism create uh, like because our God can create everything right could you answer that question that kind of question because in this world uh, a lot of us has a lot of a uh, how to say interesting intriguing people um, might try to find uh, you know solace in showing off or uh, maybe because of the lack of exposure to other tradition they trying to they're thinking in a very narrow way and trying to show off so um, it happens and it will happen but um, back to the point if we talk about the word truth um, Buddha in 3000 years ago already have talked about it Buddha cannot create the truth only discover it just like scientists if they only discover the gravity you can't create gravity so this thing is already there if you call it truth, it should have already been there. It's just we're not aware. Uh, it's common uh, conception in Christian or Abrahamic religions, you know, Catholics and all that. And they are uh, in this level of understanding, we're talking about when they talk about truth, they always refer to creation of God. Uh, uh, every human, every animal, every rocks, and uh, we call it the Genesis, right? Uh, everything you wear, everything you eat, is all created by him. 
But if we talk, if we go to the Buddhist tradition teaching, we do not talk, we do not um, say creation, because truth, it's already there. You don't need to create a truth. If it's created, there is no longer truth. So the problem is the person who observe it. It's not the truth itself. It's the person who observe the truth is not uh, fully aware of it. Uh, the universe has always been like that, has always been working in this way. and. We are not aware. We are, we are living in it. We have many generations, many lives, but we are not aware of it. In the Mahayana Sutra, Buddha um, has already talked a lot of times. Uh, so, Venerable talk about the last sentence. Uh, because Buddha has supreme wisdom, hence he understand. So understanding this level of um, knowing, what we call it ontology, or sorry, hence the truth cannot be monopolized by any masters or any teachers or any gurus. It cannot be monopolized by authorities, whether it be a theocratic, you know, religious authorities or secular authorities. Nor is it like science, they always like to debate, refute. It is not debatable or refutable if it's a truth. It's like question of egg or chicken. Does egg come first or does chicken come first? And also, there's a question of does Buddha come first before Dharma or Sangha? Because of Buddha creating, talk about Dharma and then form a Sangha. Or but without Dharma, how can there be Buddha? Without Sangha, how can there be Buddha? All these are correct. There's no fixed one way. They are, they are round. They are not one, one way. Uh, Buddha has talked to us about um, life. But like it consists of birth. Age, sickness, death, right? Everyone knows. Buddha has talked to us about that. No one can change the fact, even nowadays. So this is the truth. This is an example of the truth. Everyone will born. Age, uh, ill, and die. And this thing still happens today, right? And then Buddha has talked to us that life in this year, it consists mostly of sufferings. Very few, very, very few pleasures, very few happies. If we talk about the ratio, look at us in 365 days, is any of these days, um, how to say, which portion is more? Suffering is more or happiness is more? The, this thing is already, it's ongoing uh, forever, you know, as long as we're here. It's not created or create. There's no need to think about who created this or who um, and us being created from where. The point is, this thing already ongoing. We need to be aware of it. And how do we get out of it? So a lot of people, they say, oh, God created the world. But we can, we all, I mean, it's very common. People might say, well, if God can create the world, why can't they create something that are all equal? Everyone has the same resource. Everyone has the same uh, access to resources. Uh, why are there bad people? Why are there murders? Why are there bad, bad guys? Right? It's just not work. It does not work like that. And it's pointless to argue like this. What Buddha say is, how look at the truth that you are facing right now. And how do we solve the problem at hand? That's more important than this uh, egg or chicken debates, uh, half full or half empty. The point is, um, can if you can, um, more important thing is, can you find a meaning of your life uh, in this lifetime? 
Can you find your purpose, your mission in this lifetime? That's more important than anything. So learn practicing. Uh, start, uh, learn from Buddha. Be as a student of Buddha. Uh, the point is to awaken, to be wise. That means open up. Uh, to open up, return back to your full, perfect clarity. Return back to your recover your. Um, wisdom. So we continue. So Buddha told us that all beings, uh, including ourselves, you and I and everyone else, uh, we have such level of discerning ability, that means such level of wisdom, uh, all knowing the past, present, future, knowing the cause and effect, knowing the um, the formation of the universe. And we have this capability as well. Let's look at Amitabha Buddha. He has been Buddha for 10 kalpas. I think it's big kalpas. It's a very long time. Um, but Buddha can create some, such a world called Pure Land with such a capability you know, lifting uh, ordinary people into the level of Bodhisattva, of no return uh, level, very high. So you too has the ability as Amitabha Buddha to do that. Like if we talk about potential, even now, right here in Australia, in this seat, you can be Buddha as well at this instant. Why does Buddha mention this? is to remind us we all already have this ability. We don't need to seek or gain anything. We just need to recover it. In Buddhism, uh, he even further and say that all beings are the same as Buddha. They didn't say, I am Buddha, you must be you know, lower than me or not. No. They say, all beings are equal to the Buddha. Every part. You and Shaya Muni Buddha is the same. You and Amitabha Buddha is the same. You are Amitabha Buddha. A lot of times when we um, like when we join the Trisiani ceremony, there is a phrase, um, we call it Amitabha's heart is my heart. My heart is Amitabha's heart. However, so what's the however? What's the but? Uh, our wisdom uh, <laughs> however when we look at the reality our current reality how why is it so different uh, didn't Buddha say we're all equal uh, we have a round well we used to have round well-rounded wisdom well-rounded uh, fortunes good fortunes so why are we so far behind buddha let's take an example closest to us in this society we have smart people we have ignorant people or foolish people do you want to be ignorant people or do you want to be smart people right we all yeah we all have a preference in our heart no one wants to be ignorant, right? Everyone wants to be smart and intelligent, right? And also people with strong capability and also some people who are incapable. Oh. Also some people who are born to a wealthy uh, family or some people who become impoverished. So these are all the very real equality that happens in our face. Some people born, when they born, they can uh, immediately enjoy a luxuries of life akin to an emperor. Some people born into this impoverished uh, neighborhood. Uh, they, they're sick, uh, their life is hard. Uh, so, like example, some people are born directly to Australia. Uh, when they come out, they have everything prepared for them. Everything is uh, you know, good. Some people are born into a war country, a war-torn country. 
Some people, if they say, if they want something, they just need to utter it and they got it. Some people, no matter how hard they work, they can't reach the level. Some people has born born with tall features, good looking features. Some people were not. So what is the cause of these differences? Uh, so how did this difference come about? Why does this um, uh, gap so big? A lot of times we might even, you know, grudge, you know, whine to our parents. Oh, you know, look at my neighbors. They have the, you know, neighbor kid. They have the toys. They have, uh, they have the nice looking clothing compared to me. Uh, there's a lot of them, um, like, right? This is quite common to compare with others and we felt this um, inequality. Some people also have been in the business for 10 years, 20 years, and they work so hard and they still can't get a financial security. Some people born to it. <laughs> what they want, they have immediately. They can just spend millions and millions without problem. So this is what so Buddha told us why is this difference? Because we lost our capability. We lost our um, we temporarily lost our wisdom. Uh, our good fortune and our wisdom is originally uh, well rounded. It's perfect. However we lost it. We lost the sight of it. So today's second part of this talk is talk about lost. What does it mean by lost? Uh, losing what? How do we lose it? Uh, in Buddhism, this is a very key word. In Chinese, it's called me. Uh, because of this word me, lost, we are living, uh, living a hard life uh, in mentally, if not physically. So lost in this context. Okay. Very hard. It's very um rare for us to have the um chance to study this together with you guys to revise and understand this together. So lost refers to delusions, our delusions in form of wandering thoughts, discriminations, and attachments. Those three three pillars. Because of these delusions wandering thoughts, discriminations, attachments. We commit negative karmas every day. Repeating the faults, that means that things that we should not be doing, we do it. Unwholesome actions, unwholesome speech, unwholesome thoughts. Do we have this kind of issues? Let's think about it in, in the most uh, honest way. Especially thoughts, um, speech, turns of speech and action. No. One day alone, how many of these uh, deeds that we did that harms other people? It mostly are the people who are closest to us. Or uh, for thoughts, right? Um, for example, uh, hatred, lust, uh, or greed. Because of this, it leads to all these actions, right? That you can see nowadays that harms the world, harms the earth, pollutes the world, right? From here, something very close to, uh, we can see every day. Uh, this is why Buddha keeps saying we need to start, stop, put a stop to this uh, unwholesome deeds, wrong actions. Uh, 
we need to uh, we call it repent or more like reflect and repent without reflecting on our faults and change it we can't improve and we can't return back to the to the wisdom that we used to have for example the deeds that you do are not good uh, no, beneficial to others this effect of this action will harm you in the back for example your remark might be too sneery uh, sneery remark might hurt some people in future some people will do the same back to you in different form so that's why we all have infinite level amount of karma creditor because of this street stuff we do it wrong we say something wrong and we think something wrong so the current homework is to uh, uh, break through the uh, cause of our suffering and miseries if we do not change ourselves reform ourselves from the base level from the deepest level in our heart then we can't improve our life. We can't get good fortune or rounded fortune. I believe everyone has that, you know, feels that in their life. Something's missing, something's lacking. Something needs to be done, improved. It's a very honest question. If you think the life is good and well-rounded, why would you want to come here and listen to this Chanamito for? Or want to go to Pure Land, a land of ultimate bliss, right? Because you want to get out of this misery. Uh, if there's no misery, why would you want to go seek a land of ultimate bliss? If you're enjoying your life right now, everything is 100% for you right now, you wouldn't want to learn Buddhism. But it's not, right? For example, a few days ago, I, um, my, uh, my Dharma place, Dharma center, uh, one of them has a young people. Uh, he just, um, let's say, uh, he just started a relationship. And he, um, he, uh, you know, he talked to me about his um, afflictions in his, his relationships. He say, I thought when I started the relationship, I was looking for happiness in each other. However, the result is contrast. Uh, the more we get deeper into relationship, the more painful we felt. It's supposed to be happy. Why is it so sad and miserable? And when you look at someone who just married, or maybe after one week or one month or two months, uh, they divorce. Why? Because if we just rely on the emotion, we call it love alone, it has been polluted with lust, with control, control over others. Uh, owning others, that kind of thought. Uh, it's all based on the ego, me, me, me. And if you, if that other half of you, um, that partners does not fulfill that version, that you know, that desires that you have set in your heart, then you feel painful and hence frictions. However, if you look at Bodhisattva Buddha, those sages. Their love, we call compassion, we don't call love. Their compassion, their love is real because they have no self-interest in it. Uh, even when you, you know, say something harmful, hurtful to them, uh, even inflict harm on them, they will not retaliate. They will not have hatred. The worldly love, if they can't, 
if if you know they don't satisfy each of their needs in these relationships in any forms you know monetary loss or anything it becomes hate love becomes hate but buddha and bodhisattva and all the sages their love is like parents towards children unconditional so respectful uh, venerable, uh, respectful brothers and sisters dharma brothers and sisters this is a, the very key point we need to be awakened to be aware of uh, why do we learn buddhism because with buddhism if we practice it we become wiser and wiser in handling people in handling our emotion when facing people, when facing all such sort of conditions, no matter it's a good, favorable, or bad, miserable um, encounter, our heart will not be moved. Our mind remains still. That's the goal. However, the reality right now is we all get swayed away by anything that happens around us. Uh, and the worst thing is, worst thing you could get is you get deeper and deeper into this love and hate, love and hate, and this kind of spiral, downward spiral. That's a cost of our downfall. That's a cost that we lost the sight of our full wisdom, full fortune. So what should we do now? How do I go back? So Buddha told us, you have an innate wisdom that is perfect and well rounded, but unfortunately you lost it from the level of Shayamir Buddha, Amitabha Buddha, from the level of a Buddha. Uh, that means a person who lives freely because they're wise, they don't get entangled. Become someone we are now today, ordinary being. A lot of entanglement. But let, let me ask you a question. Are you actually an ordinary being in essence? No. No one is always an ordinary being. It's a temporal, well, it's quite a long temporal, but it's a, it's a temporal condition. It's a diseased temporarily. You are a Buddha. That is who you are. That's your original identity. But you lost the sight of it. And because you lose the sight of it, you get into that delusion. It becomes an ordinary being, bounded by all things. For example, someone who is drunk, right? When they drunk, they lost rational thoughts, right? They act irrationally. But can we dictate that that person in that drunken state is him or her? In essence, no. When they wake up, they become back to their original self, the, or the normal self, right? So same for us. So going back to this topic of lost, we lost it because of the delusion of wandering thoughts, discriminations and attachments. If we break through these three layers, uh, these three obstacles towards our uh, back to our home, you know, back to our enlightenment, back to our Buddha self, then we become Buddha. That means we are free. We are truly free. A freedom, right? This is the real freedom. And the key is to let go. If we can let go of our attachment in everything. <laughs> yes, it sounds, it's a sound path to do, to walk, but it's so hard. I chant Amitabha every day, or I meditate every day, or whatever um, homework I did. I still have a lot of affliction, right? I chant Amitabha, I pray to Buddha, uh, I read the Sutra, I listen to the Dharma, but yet my affliction remains heavy. My delusion remains deep. What can I do? In fact, the benefit is subtle. What is the benefit? When you hear Sutra, like Master Qing Gong's speech or any Dharma speech right like now, 
you were reminded, you were washed one again. Uh, because someone like Buddha, his Dharma talk, his, his word is not, it's born out of a one with a pure heart, wisdom. It has a level to wake you up. Mm. So we just need to immerse more in there. Yeah. So next Wednesday, I'll continue this topic with you guys. Mm. Today, uh, being able to gather with everyone here, first, uh, when I learned Amitofo, I mean, when we study Buddhism, learn Buddhism, uh, the core goal of learning Buddhism is to learn about ourselves, to learn more about ourselves, to know more about ourselves. Uh, and one of them is, why am I learning Buddhism in this environment? In this environment, what can Buddhism bring to the table, you know, to help me to go through this life? And now we talk about lost. So how do we found? Lost and found, right? How do we find it back? What is the method? So what's the cause of the loss and how do we find it back? What's the method? What ways can we use to break through the delusions, the wandering thoughts, the discriminations, and this attachment that causes us to do bad deeds, bad speech, bad thoughts. Uh, how do we transform it around, turn it around? Next week, we will talk in depth on this. How do we find it back? Because now it's quite late, it's 9.30. Uh, usually we um, use one hour to give a, a brief talk. How do we uh, recognize Buddhism? What is Buddha? What's the um, um, meaning of Buddha? So, why do we not translate Buddhism? That's what we learned today. Um, what's the meaning of Buddha? And how do we find it back, our Buddha nature? Hopefully next week, uh, 8.30 to 9.30, I hope we can get it again next Wednesday to continue these topics. If today I've mentioned anything that are not uh, um, right, wholesome, I hope everyone can uh, give me some feedback. Uh, I also hope next uh, Wednesday uh, we all can uh, participate and learn together. Because of your participation, it encouraged me to settle down and learn about myself, learn about Buddhism. To, which is about myself, uh, and then I will, we will all be able to improve together. So that's the biggest benefit of coming together and learn. So I hope next week uh, we can learn uh, together and also encourage our dear youth group uh, and also to myself. Uh, because of you, uh, we will have this uh, condition. Uh, to be together. Uh, I hope next week, uh, camera, uh, open up your camera next week. Uh, don't hide behind the screen. <laughs> the shuttle. Open up uh, so they can see each other. That way we, we you're in present, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't hide behind the camera. And be, it makes it like, leave me alone here, you know, drifting. So open up your camera next round. It's also a sign of uh, respect to whoever is speaking towards a, 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 you know, a monk. If you um, close your camera, uh, it feels like there's a gap between us, you know, we can connect. So, back to this um, topic, um, 
it gets more and more interesting uh, upcoming speech it gets better actually especially um, all these great master including our teacher uh, master Xing Kong. he has given a very interesting um, content in it uh, i can't say everything but i can take out the main point to you okay that's it for today i hope everyone uh, have a good healthy life all right, see you again next Wednesday. Amitofo. Amitofo. <coughs> 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 上报四重恩下济三途苦若有见闻者喜发菩提心谢谢大家阿弥陀佛晚安晚安晚安阿弥陀佛下个星期三见下个星期三阿弥陀佛阿弥陀佛<笑>